uh, Dr. Josh Long with uh, AME Podcasts. Um, we actually sponsor this podcast with Through Art and Music Emporium, which is serving artistic excellence. We do things such as lessons, repairs, um, as well as other performing initiative initiatives, excuse me, such as the Wildwood, the annual community band by the sea in Wildwood, New Jersey, as well as we're opening up a new event uh, down in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, <clears throat> excuse me, for Music Fest, uh, the Bethlehem Steel Company Legacy Band. Uh, so the Wildwood Band goes on in July and the one in Bethlehem goes on in August. So if you're interested in participating, please check out Art and Music Emporium. Uh, we also have a Facebook page for Art Music Emporium, which you can like us, as well as Joshua E. Long. You can like uh, like me as well. Um, and obviously, you're watching this AME podcast on YouTube, so please subscribe to our channel. Uh, any videos that come out, you'll get a notification. Um, also, we do have a Patreon account if you are interested in giving money, because these podcasts goes towards helping people continuing making music. And that's what our performing initiatives are about. Um, also, kind of this idea of our good old podcast, just because we want to see people to continue making music throughout their life. Lifelong learning, as I said. Well, anyway, I have a great, great guest today. Um, <clears throat> she's been kind of a colleague with me, kind of back and forth in Penn State. Um, I know she was uh, in the military as a clarinetist. Um, as well as a great conductor, uh, educator. I know she's at school right now and a great friend. And also we'll probably get into it too. She took over the Belfont Community Band, one of the great community bands out there, a lot of great people. Um, so if you would, please welcome Meg Pedlow-Smith. Take it away, Meg. All right. Well, thank you, Josh, for inviting me to be here with you today. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity and appreciate what you're doing to try to encourage lifelong music making. Um, Josh asked me if I would do just a little introduction of myself, so I'll start there. I started playing the clarinet when I was in fourth grade, like a lot of people picking up an, an instrument in elementary school. Um, that I went on to play all through middle school, high school, um, picked up the saxophone along the way as well. Uh, went to Penn State, as Josh mentioned, and I did an undergraduate degree in music education there, followed by a master's degree in musicology. From there, I went into the Navy as a musician. So I was an active duty fleet musician uh, for eight years. I was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia, Naples, Italy, and Newport, Rhode Island uh, during my time in the Navy. Um, and then I got out and went back to Penn State, got another master's degree in wind conducting. And that was when Josh and I first um, kind of crossed paths. Um, he was wrapping up his degrees at Penn State when I came back and we met each other there. Um, and then, as Josh mentioned, when he left central Pennsylvania um, and had to uh, retire, so to speak, from directing the Belfont Community Band, I took over that group, um, which has been just a, a wonderful experience, um, in large part due to all of the work that, that Josh did prior to my tenure. Um, I'm still working with that group in the summers, uh, but during the academic year, I am in Ohio right now. I'm completing my PhD at Ohio University. I'm in the interdisciplinary arts program here, which allows students to choose two subject areas within the arts. So I am focusing on musicology and wind conducting. Very cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. And well, I will say this really quickly before we get into the thick of it, but I know you I know you mentioned that it was all my good work. I, I've seen a lot of great work happening at Belfont Community Band, and I know you're still involved, which is one thing I was worried about when 
when you went off to college, I'm like, oh no, she's leaving. But it's cool that you've stuck on and and been helping out on the summer end. And uh, yeah, and well, it's such, it's, it's <laughs> as you know, it's such a great group with um, such wonderful members who are are willing to really go the extra mile and and make things happen. So. <laughs> Well, cool. And we'll get into the thick of that in a second. But um, so I had I had a, a couple questions um, as far as and, and if we if you don't mind, I know it's you know, we sit here, we were, we were just talking about your family and it was like, wow, t- years keep, keep going on. But I was trying to think if you could think a little bit about what inspired you as far as getting into clarinet. You know, you, you made a comment that I know it might be hard to think about that <laughs> at this point. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we all say that. But I was just interested if if you would, uh, you know, because it's going to kind of lean in a couple questions, if you don't mind. Sure. Sorry. Yeah. Well, um, thinking back to to that time, I think that when I was in fourth grade, uh, my elementary school band director had uh, a band day at school where some of the older kids demonstrated the instruments and uh, you know, just try to get the the upcoming fourth graders interested in playing. And, um, and you know, as soon as I saw these instrument de- demonstrations, I was I was just hooked. And I I ran home to my parents and I said, you know, that I really wanted to play an instrument. And my dad had played the clarinet. Um, mm-hmm while he was in school, um, through high school. Now, his story was that he was so bad at playing the clarinet (laughs) that in the high school marching band, the director took him out of the band and made him the announcer up in the the booth for the the high school marching band. Um, But he still had his old clarinet, even though he hadn't played since high school. And so when I said that I wanted to play an instrument, um, well, it was going to be the clarinet because that was that was what we had. (laughs) Well, very cool. Wow. I I, I didn't actually know your dad. Cool. (laughs) Very cool. So um, and then kind of on on the side of that, obviously, you know, and I, I know you went through state college and, you know, the, all the programs and everything. And I know there's wonderful teachers there because I've met a lot of them, <laughs> you know, so um, but I was just interested, um, you know, and, you know, you had this interest for it and, and then you continued. You went you went on into the service. And by by the way, thank you for your service. Um, but like I was just interested what what inspired you to do that, you know, as far as, you know, move on to where you were actually making clarinet playing much more of a professional gig, you know what I mean? In in the beginning, I know, I know it's not now, but I was just interested if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, I, I think that it's that hold that music takes on us. Um, Mm -hmm. and it's not something that can necessarily be put into words, but, um, I think that it, it grabs hold of, of people and they want to continue doing it. Um, for me, I wanted to actually make it my profession, um, for, for other people, um, they, want to keep music as part of their lives, um, not necessarily as their career, um, but as a, a hobby. Um, but either way, it's it's um, just that that grasp of of music that uh, we we want to keep it part of our lives um, and and keep doing it. Yeah, very well said. I mean, and definitely. I mean, I guess that's that's where. Um... And, and kind of going on with these podcasts, I know you watched a, a few of them already, but what I keep grappling with, <laughs> you know, is um, the fact, and, and you didn't do this, which is, um, which, which is fine. I mean, obviously everyone makes choices, but you, you continued on and you're still making music today. I mean, you're still, still active. You're still involved. You're still playing clarinet. I know that you're still conducting. And I, you know, it's, it's something once school ends, whether or not you participate in college, I'm, I'm grappling with people falling off that kind of bandwagon <laughs> per se, no pun intended, but there is a pun, <laughs> you know, where essentially they just stop, you know, and it's sad because, um, you know, whether or not it becomes a profession or becomes something, you know, it, it's something, you know, extracurricular, <laughs> you know, but I, I'm just, I'm just wondering, and that's, that's the reason why I was asking you that, um, you know, is how like, 
how people make that decision to have music kind of grasp then to to continue through you know what i mean so but so anyway i was, I was just interested like i said about that so um if I may ask, I know I know your time at the you know the the service kind of ended um, at that particular time, and then you went back to college, um, and that's where we met. And I was just interested before that, uh, what was the decision making in that as far as you know to continue? I mean, you 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 went on, you had a career, um, which is great, and then you you're still continuing. <laughs> you know, if I may ask about that. Yeah, sure. Well. Um... There were a number of, of factors that, that led into me um, deciding to, to leave the service after mm -hmm. eight years, um, including the fact that, that my husband, who um, was also in the service, was actually retiring at that oh. point. So oh, okay. you know, it seemed like a good time for us as uh, a family mm -hmm. to kind of make a, a um, joint decision about what we were going to do next. And um, then, you know, I, I had really developed this strong interest in conducting, mm -hmm. um, but didn't have really much experience or, or training with it. And so uh, a large um, factor was also being able to um, use the GI Bill and go back mm -hmm. to school um, to study conducting. And, and we decided that that was really what we wanted to do. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and if I may ask, um, you know, and, and I know g going about how you were talking in the beginning, and, and these are the reason my, for my questions that music kept a hold of you. So what inspired you to, you know, continue? I mean, I, you said, you know, that you wanted to go on for conducting, um, but like, what was there a specific reason as far as, um, you know, you know, as music had a hold on you, mm -hmm, <laughs> I guess sure. I'll ask it that way. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, for me, um, I, you know, I, like I said, I, I had developed this real interest in conducting. And for me, uh, I think it was, it was a different aspect of mm -hmm. music making, mm -hmm. um, not being the, the player yourself, um, but being, um, a little bit more involved with the overall musical mm -hmm. product and uh, I you know I just I really liked that um, idea when I was in the Navy I did have a few opportunities to conduct and you know I really just enjoyed them and uh, wanted to be better at it really mm -hmm. um, and so that was that was why um, we decided to to go down that path. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I think, I think there's something to say about that, you know, as far as, as you're thinking of, of all the interconnections that, you know, when you play, I mean, obviously, you know, you're, you're still contributing, but all, all those kind of interconnections of, of making that and then, you know, not to be funny, maybe he'll watch this, but when we had, you know, Dennis Clocky as our <laughs> teachers, he, we thought we knew so much. And then, you know, we get the, to the scores and he's like, oh, we don't know anything about conducting <laughs> the way he looks at it, <laughs> which I'm sure you, you'll appreciate. <laughs> so I, I know you got involved um, with the community band there. Um, just the one last question is we're kind of going over the history and then we'll jump into Belfont community band because I want to get, get your opinions on that. But um, so I know you've moved on. You know, and and now you're you know going for your doctorate, um, and and I know uh, what if if I may ask was there I mean it, it, I'm assuming the interest that you had at Penn State kind of really strengthened a, a little bit more I'm assuming, and I was just wondering you know if if you could talk a little bit and expand that, and again if to go back to this thing is what I'm encouraging through this podcast is you know how people really get grasped into music, you know, and get caught into this, like, in this cog of music, which is great, you know, where it becomes something that you'll, you'll, you'll dedicate years, you know, of your life. Cause the reason why I wanted to say it, I know I look back now and I look at college and I was like, wow, I went 12 years to college, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you think, wow, that is a lot of years, but you know, it, it's just, it, it was so meaningful to me. And I, I think that's, that's what you keep talking about. And I, I just, I was just interested. Was there, you, you continued and you're going on for your doctorate. And I know you just made a comment that this is your last semester of actual in class, you know, um, coursework. So was there, did the interest grow? If I'm asking. 
Uh, well, sure. Yeah, I think so. Um, and, you know, plus, you know, the fact that I, I just like being in a student. I like being in school. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy learning. So I think that has to be at the, the heart of it. Um, yeah for this really to be enjoyable. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to keep getting better, improving my conducting skills, um, keep learning about music history and, and writing. Um, and, uh, the, again, you know, the, the GI bill is a wonderful, uh, benefit that I was mm -hmm. able to receive from yeah. the Navy. And so, being able to use that to go to school is uh, is a great thing. Yeah, awesome. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said about that, you know, where, where you could learn. And I think that's one thing I always try to tell a lot of people is there's so much to learn about music. You can't, I don't think we can ever learn everything. <laughs> you know, there's always something to, to learn. So awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for just sharing that because I'm always interested on people's paths just because it kind of helps inform. So so thank you. I mean, I, I appreciate all that. So so let's talk a little bit about the community band, you know, this side of this, um, you know, and it, to, to set this, you know, up a little bit. You know, when we talk about community bands, obviously there's no requirement prior to be in a community band, right? Um, as long as you play an instrument, uh, most people I would say are probably from high school, you know, or some sort of school and play, some play for fun still. Some I think are, you know, on the professional world and those kind of things too. But I want to, um, before I kind of set the stage up a little bit, I was wondering if you wanted to talk, I know, I know you mentioned there's a lot of great people there. I wanted to, um, get your first initial thoughts of the Belfont community band. And then I'll, uh, I'm actually going to um, talk a little bit more about it in a second, just cause I wanted to, but anyway, I know you said there are a lot of great people and I, I know you're, you're still involved with it. So, I mean, I guess my first question is what do you like a lot about it? Uh, I think it's, it's just such a, a great group of uh, people, of people who want to keep making music in uh, their lives. That's why they keep showing up. Um, and uh, there are so many people who are just willing to help with all of the things that need to be done that to, to make this happen, um, that it, it, everything really runs very smoothly. And so it's just a, a joy to work with that group because of, um, everybody's willingness to contribute musically and otherwise. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. I know. Great. <clears throat> I, I will continue to say this. I know it's a great board, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and not that it's trying to make your life easier, but it it is when, you know, everything's scheduled, you know, all those kind of things. But so one thing, and let me, let me say this. I know I did my dissertation. I did some research. I had certain uh, members from the Belfont community band kind of answer, you know, a couple questions. What I kind of found as far as with my dissertation is a lot of them were really into making music, you know, and making music at a really high level. And it doesn't necessarily mean it had to be high quality, meaning, and I don't want to say that they don't do quality. That's not what I'm saying. But like, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, because we, we say in the professional world, you know, music has to be perfect. But they had a lot into it emotionally. And I was just wondering, you know, with with the time that you've had with them already, um, is there any instances that you've seen as far as, you know, people when they're making music that they're really just getting into it, I guess, you know what I mean? Cause you keep saying that, you know, they keep coming back. That's true. They keep coming. <laughs> you know. And I know when I left, uh, it's grown since I've been there. So kudos to you, <laughs> you know, so they're obviously to the point where I believe now you, you guys aren't at the the local school anymore, the middle school. Um, I think you're at a, at, at a church, if I'm not mistaken, cause it's gotten so big. <laughs> Yeah. So, so I was just wondering, I mean, is there anything that you've seen, um, you know, with the, you know, the, the connection of, uh, of their making music, I guess. Yeah, I think the, the, it might be a little hard to tell in, in the moment when people are, are, are concentrating and, and playing and, and whatnot, but you, you, you talk to people, like you said that you did for your mm -hmm. research and, um, they, they enjoy it. They, 
um, are grateful for the opportunity to, mm -hmm. to have a band like that nearby in their area. Um, and, uh, you know, during uh, COVID, when we couldn't meet in person, we would do Zoom sessions like this together mm -hmm. and, and people would tune in to our Zoom sessions just to talk and, and learn about music. They were just uh, sincerely interested. Um, so uh, yeah, to answer your question, I, you know, I think that there is that, uh, you know, grasp of, of music, the love of music um, amongst the members. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and, and if you don't mind, I know you kind of brought up COVID. I didn't even think about that. Um... I, I, I know when everything did go remote, um, you know, and and I guess my first question is, I know you just said it, a lot of people came online. Obviously, there was no playing going on at that particular time. If you wouldn't mind, because uh, I actually don't know this, when the group restarted again, um, you know, was, did you notice a decline? And as, uh, you know, as far as like, um, participation or, or members or anything, or did, did it kind of, you know, like, well, it was the COVID years and we just stopped <laughs> and then came back. Cause like, I guess my question is, did we lose any, did you lose anybody? <laughs> you know what I mean? Just cause of the, cause of that. Um, well, we started back up again fairly early compared oh, okay. to mm -hmm. a lot of other groups. Um, we, uh, you know, Oh, through the the early winter of 2020 we had stopped rehearsing mm -hmm. um and then we got into the warmer months and we really weren't necessarily planning to pick things back up again in the summer of 2020 but there's a a concert series in Belfont that we had way back been on tap mm -hmm. to, to play for during that summer and they had gotten a few groups um, that were willing to to come out and play during the summer of 2020, mostly just smaller musical ensembles. But they reached okay. out to us as one of their regular groups asking, are you interested in doing a concert for us mm -hmm. this summer? And so the the band president and I said, well, we can kind of look into it. Um, and so we put out a survey to the band members um, to say, to ask, you know, who, you know, if we put these safeguards in place, who would be um, interested in participating in, mm -hmm. in this concert? And uh we we thought we didn't know what kind of response we would get. We you know we might get five people who say they're interested, you know, and you know we just won't be able to do it. But actually, we got we got about thirty people oh, awesome. who said um, that they were um, interested in participating in that manner. Oh, awesome. um, and so we rehearsed outdoors. Um, with spacing and, and everything. And uh, I, I selected repertoire that is geared towards um, smaller ensembles. We right. did some um, flex band pieces. Um, and so that all worked out. Um, and uh, we ended up actually, in addition to the concert series con concert, we ended up scheduling a, a few other performances for that summer since we were rehearsing. Um, so, uh, you know, 30 is a lot less than what we would normally have, but, right. um, mm -hmm. you know, for, for that time it worked. And mm -hmm. so for the next couple years, we kind of maintained that system. We would, did not work, uh, rehearse at all, um, from fall through spring. Okay. Which mm -hmm. normally would be our, our main rehearsal time. Yeah, main rehearsal time. Yeah. Um, but we would pick things back up in late April with okay. outdoor rehearsals and then uh, perform through the summer and be done by the end of August. So we we did that for for two or three um, summers, I guess, um, that way. And, and each summer we got more people um, coming back. Um, and now um, I'd say we are at least back to our numbers from before, if not more. You know. Yeah, more, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. <clears throat> yeah yeah awesome yeah I was, I was just interested just because it seemed like there was still a motivation to be involved and i know 
you know, I know of the times that, you know, obviously there wasn't a lot to do <laughs> musically for obvious reasons, <laughs> but, but that's awesome that you did that. And, you know, people felt, you know, safe to come out and do it. Um, you know, so, so that's cool. So very cool. Um, um, my next kind of question I just wanted to ask, um, you know, just cause, you know, I, I've been seeing what I call the, the snapshots of the group, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I know I came out in the 40th anniversary concert, obviously, and it was, it was very big. And I know we had a lot of uh, past members and me included, I came and, you know, people that are normally around. Um, but I don't know if you want to uh, just talk a little bit about that time, um, if you don't mind, um, you know, where, again, I'm, I'm I'm looking at the engagement thing. I mean, I know it was the 40th anniversary for the concert. And of course, I'm walking in as a snapshot of just, you know, seeing the band, obviously missing the pandemic years. And uh, seeing how huge <laughs> the group was <laughs> and people just basically ready to celebrate, you know, for the Belfont Community Band. And the reason why I'm saying that is the mass of people there and audience members was just amazing because it was just so cool to see, to see players, you know, to see everybody just so excited about. So I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Um, it had been since the 25th anniversary of the band that we had uh, done something special like that um, in mm -hmm. terms of an anniversary concert. So um, <clears throat> when the, the the band board and I met um, over the previous winter, um, we realized that the, this summer would this is the the last summer 2023 that we're talking about now but yeah. we realized that that summer would be the the 40th anniversary of the band and so we decided that okay 15 years since we've done a a big anniversary concert let's let's plan something um special and so uh we kind of worked our some of our repertoire around that idea mm -hmm. We knew that we would be inviting back the former directors to conduct a piece on the concert, so they all had their input um, uh, as well. And um, the the we at, throughout all of our concerts for the summer, we would mention the fact that this was our 40th anniversary season. Um, mm -hmm. and, but we were really building up to the 40th anniversary concert, which was going to take place in mid August um, in Talleyrand Park. In in, in Belfont, which is our uh, kind of home uh, base in terms of, of concerts. Mm -hmm. um, great uh, little Victorian park um, with a gazebo and, and lights and a little train station next to the park. And, and we always get a big crowd when we play there, but particularly for this 40th anniversary concert, um, we got a great crowd. Uh, the, uh, it, it, it was organized as part of the regular summer concert series that takes place in that park over the summer. Um, so, you know, we always want to acknowledge and, and thank the Summer Sound series as well for the work that, that they do, because having those concert series that you can be a part of, I think, always helps because people know that you know on on sunday at seven in the park there's there's going to be a concert um but i and then you know in terms of thinking about the engagement um as as you've been talking about josh i think that those kinds of things um can be really great for a group um you know you, it's something that um you're you're working towards something that marks our history together as an ensemble um you know we like you said we invited back any former players from the group to to come back and and join us um and the past directors as well we in the script for the concert we talked about some of the history of of the group for the audience to to be aware of um so yeah there was just you know a lot of excitement around that event um you know it not not the kind of thing that we would do every year or for us even every five years would probably be too much but i think at this point we can be looking ahead to our 50th anniversary mm -hmm. in 10 years and you know planning um something similar or or even bigger for that time just to give uh a sense of of excitement to the the group and and something special to celebrate every once in a while yeah 
Awesome. You know, and I just wanted to say it was very well done, <laughs> you know, just because coming back and, and just seeing such a, a, and I'm not saying this being negative, but like a spectacle. I mean, it was just, it was great, you know, just to celebrate the band, you know, that, that's just, that's what I have to say. And the only reason why I'm saying that is like, that's what, that's what, you know, they always say warms your heart, right? You walk in and of course you see all these people in the audience and you see this large band out there who are all wanting to just make music and, you know, it was just great to see, you know, obviously old friends and new friends and all of those kind of things. But, you know, I, it's just, so on that same line, I know, I know something that large is not necessarily what you're going to do every year, but I was just thinking, could you talk just a little bit about what you do as far as a conductor, you know, <clears throat> for the group, what you do for them to kind of keep that momentum going forward. Cause I know that one that kind of had its own momentum, you know, being the 40th year, but yet I will say you were awesome in planning it so early. Cause I had already had it in my, you know, scheduled in my date book, like almost a year in advance, which was awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but I was just interested as, as far as, as you're moving forward and could even be this summer coming up, like what you do as far as a conductor to kind of keep that momentum moving forward. Yeah, well, we can talk about big or or special events like that, which I I think help uh, a group. Um, a couple years ago, we were invited to play for the um, opening ceremonies of the Pennsylvania Special Olympics. Okay. Mm -hmm. on the Penn State campus. And um, that was such a um, unique and um, really amazing event for the group to be a part of. And uh, we got so much p positive feedback from the band members um, of you know, how much they enjoyed being able to be a part of that event. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, being able to schedule those special kinds of things every once in a while that maybe change up the, the regular routine, um, I think are, are, are good things to, to keep in mind um, and being willing to try those, those new kinds of, of events. Um, but for me as a director, I, I think I always have to just bring it back to the music um, and mm -hmm. and the music making. Um, to me, that is the most important part. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, as the music director, I think that it's it's my job first and foremost to make sure that the players are having um, these wonderful musical experiences. Um, you know, ultimately, all the other kinds of things could be, you know, planned or, or scheduled or, or organized by other people, but it's, it's, it's the musical experiences that that fall on me um, to make sure that what we're providing um, the players with is, is um, good um, quality musical experiences that they're, uh, that they are, are learning new things, that they are uh, expanding their um, knowledge and their techniques and their um, musical experiences. So ultimately, I look at that as, as the goal and the primary purpose of, of my role as the director. Awesome. And, and, and that's, that, that's great that you say that not to be coy and asking this kind of question, <laughs> but how do you do that? Cause you're obviously doing it well, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, the, the groups have gotten big. It went through the pandemic times when most groups have unfortunately disappeared. Um, some groups, I shouldn't say most, some groups have disappeared. Um, so I'm just interested what, you know, and, and I agree that's that kind of high quality music making. So what do you do? What do you do in, in that regards, I guess, if you don't mind sharing? Sure. I mean, in some ways, it's it's kind of um, an intangible that maybe you can't necessarily just write out a, a formula for how it happens. But um, I think first, uh, you have to consider repertoire selection. What music is going to work well for this group? Um, in terms of the players and also the events that we play for. Um, we do not typically just play um, sit down concerts in an auditorium where people are just coming to hear music. We play for um, events. We play for a lot of festivals. 
where people are sort of milling about and maybe a few people are sitting listening, but a lot of people are just moving around. Um, we do play for some concert series, like I mentioned, where people are primarily there um, to listen, but still it's outdoors, it's in a park. Um, that influences the kind of repertoire that you can can choose as well. So um, music that is is going to both challenge, but also be accessible to a wide range of players. Music that is by and large going to appeal to the audience, but still, you know, there might be a few selections on the program that are primarily meant to appeal to the musicians. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, with a little explanation, I, I think that that um, you can always get the audience on board um, with with just about anything that that you might program. Um, and so uh, first and foremost, repertoire selection, music that is going to give the players um, the, the kinds of experiences that I am, am hoping that they'll have, um, challenge them, but not be so difficult that um, they don't feel successful at the end of a concert. Um, and then I, you, we could consider um, rehearsal techniques, how you approach rehearsals, um, the conductor's manner in front of, of the group. Um, so, you know, what, what am I going to be doing in the course of rehearsal that's going to uh, move us along um, in terms of, of the repertoire, but also in terms of musical skills? Um, long-term musical skills. Um, you know, what are the players learning um, by being in this ensemble? Whether that player is a um, high school student or whether they are a retiree. Um, so, you know, I think keeping all of those kinds of things in mind is important. Um, and, and finally, just remembering that even though technical ability is often kind of what we see and hear first and foremost, um, there are many different aspects to musicianship. And so if we only consider uh, a player in terms of their technical ability or a group in terms of its technical ability, we're missing uh, a lot of different pieces of, of the musical puzzle. Um, so you might have a player who has really great technique, but maybe they're not a very good listener. Or you might have a player who is still in the beginning stages of, of their technique, but is um, really very sensitive to, mm -hmm. to what's going on around them um, or has some very musical ideas. So if we're only ever focusing on the technical abilities of the players, uh, I think that we're missing a lot. So just in the course of, of a rehearsal, in the course of a season, are we doing things with repertoire? Are we doing things with rehearsals? Um, that are building all of the skills of the musicians, because in that, if you are doing all of those things, then you're doing something that's going to appeal to everybody, mm -hmm. because everybody has areas where they can can get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, I know it's like, and and you know this, <laughs> but it's it's very. I think it's very difficult to keep everyone moving forward especially at all different levels um you know because I, I think the easiest one like you said is to, to say t technique you know we oh yeah technique yes you know we can always work on technique but there's so much more to that <laughs> you know what i mean as far as like you know engaging in the music being involved putting your mo you know your motivation into it you know um i had a great i just wanted to share this i had a great um uh, prof one of my professors in connecticut made a comment to me that you know, it's, 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 yeah, technique is important and you need to work on that, but it's more than just that, you know, it's more of whatever your sound is or the quality that you're going to hear. <laughs> that's what people are going to hear rather than if, you know, you, you messed a note <laughs> or something in that. So, but yeah, I, I guess like what I, what I keep like poking at, if that's the right word, is that there's so much into it, 
you know, especially of having a multi-generational group, right? You know, meaning people of all ages. And, you know, I, I was just wondering, is there anything that you find that's, uh, you know, uh, difficult with that? And I know you shared that already of like how, how you how you take each time and make sure the repertoire and the rehearsal practices and, you know, worry about each and every person, which is great. But I was just wondering if 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 you could share if if there is you know, anything that's might be difficult about keeping all those folks moving forward, <laughs> especially when there are different ages and different, um, you know, uh, levels of, of musicianship, I guess is the best way to say it. Yeah, sure. Well, I, I think that what, what you just described um, is the, the real challenge of a group like that. Uh, we do not have an audition requirement. Mm -hmm. So anybody can come and join, which is great. Um, but that means that you have people who are really are beginners on their instruments to people who were music majors in college and people who uh, were music educators as their uh, career. So, um, you know, with that wide of a, a range of, of people in the group, plus the generational aspect, um, like you mentioned, um, you, you really uh, have to try to, to be reaching um, all kinds of, of people on different levels. And so, um, like you said, you know, I think that that is really the the challenge of a group like that. Now, some community bands operate on a different model. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are an audition group, then things are a little bit different. different you know? right. um, yep. So, but, you know, then that, that poses its own challenges as well. Um, but, you know, one, one of the things I love about the Belfont Community Band is, you know, it's just a, a really supportive group you know, everybody um, comes regardless of of experience and and ability level, and um, it it works. It just comes together and it works. <laughs> yeah, definitely awesome. You know, I mean, awesome that you just say that it just works. And I I know that's like the magic I call it. That's what I I keep continuing talking about. And even though unfortunately I had to move away, you know, I, I keep thinking about that all the time of how that magic kind of works. Cause you know, one thing I always share, and I, I I've said this before in so many countless things is, you know, these people come and volunteer. I mean, technically, you know, they could stop, <laughs> you know what I mean? You could, you know, not that you want this negative side of it, but you know, you, it could be non-fulfilling to them or they could be upset about something and they could disappear. Not that that doesn't happen, but that momentum hasn't happened, especially with you. I mean, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's continued to move forward, which is the reason why I wanted to, you know, talk to you uh, today because it's, you know, it's more about that engagement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it, and another thing that we have going for us in, in, in terms of our model and the way that we do things is just flexibility. Um, you know, we, we will have people who for a season say that, you know, right now in, in this time of life, I, I just can't do this right now. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. And we just let them know, okay, you are welcome to come back whenever you, you can. Um, we also, we, we do about 12 concerts a summer, which when you think about it is is quite a bit about mm -hmm. 12 weeks in the summer 12 performances that's yeah. that's a lot so um <laughs> we're also just flexible in terms of attendance um if you have to miss miss a rehearsal that's fine um if you have to miss concerts over the summer because you're going away that's that's fine um but we're fortunate to have enough players in the group um that if if people are missing uh that's that's all right we can continue to to function and that's uh, you know another aspect of repertoire selection too i can't be choosing pieces uh where we're you know we we fall apart if we're missing a few people um mm -hmm. so um you know, just bearing that in mind as well. But but that's our model. Um, not every group can and, and does function in that way. But for us, 
like we we said, it works, and and so that's that's what what we do. Awesome, yeah, yeah, and definitely, I, I keep I keep going back to this. You know, the it's just something I'm thinking about when you're talking, and I know this is foolish, but it's like you know the carrot to keep everybody coming. <laughs> you know, it's there's there's some sort of you know, hey, come and play, even though that yes, I know life happens and vacations happen and all of that, but it, it just seems like you know, it, it's a well-oiled machine <clears throat> in Belfont just because of the people keep coming out. And I know that's, you know, like, I, I don't think me or you or anybody can probably answer that question, but <laughs> so as we wrap this up, uh, I did have a, and, and this is something I've been asking uh, actually mostly everybody on our podcast at some point. And I know this might be a deep question, um, but um, I was wondering if you could add a little bit of words of wisdom of, you know, and I'm looking at this and, and, and let me just set this up a little bit. So people, and I, I know you don't have this really in Belfont because you, you have a good uh, roster of folks that come through, but I'm thinking about people who are either have played in high school or college and have stopped or people who are thinking about stopping uh, because of various reasons, um, just because, you know, my my strength is that, you know, when we say it's just because of life. Well, yes, I agree. But if you want to, if it's a priority to you, you will make time for it. You know what I mean? And and I know sometimes you can't do everything. And I think flexibility answers that question, like you said, with the Belfont Community Band. But I was wondering if you could offer a little bit of words of wisdom about people who are, you know, or who are actively you know, continuing to making music, because that's obviously what I'm looking at here through this podcast. And just if you could share anything about that as far as um, what you could say to somebody to get them involved, or continue playing, or, you know, continue this lifelong contest of, shouldn't say contest, quest of music making, where you've been doing it, even though, you know, you said, oh, you know, I went on to the profession, and now you're on to another degree and you're involved with that and you're still involved with the community band and, and Belfon, you're still making music and conducting and you're still doing it, you know, so you're doing it. Um, so I, I don't know if you can expand a little bit on that or, or talk a little bit words of wisdom. I know it's a deep hole. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I think that this uh, question could be approached from maybe a number of different angles. Uh, I uh, First, I'll say that I think that, you know, we as the, the uh, members of this profession, um, the directors of community bands, educators, I think that we need to uh, oftentimes take a, a, a better look at what we can be doing to encourage lifelong music making mm -hmm. um where are the places that we can try to make those connections and and make things happen um so that students so younger people whether they be high school college um see that this is something that they can do um, for their uh, entire lives, um, that they can keep it as a part of their life, um, no matter what they end up doing after school. Um, and by, by, by literally seeing the, the adults in their community doing this and enjoying it, um, I think that's important that we consider how we can build those opportunities so for us in the Belfont Community Band, again, the way that we operate without requiring an audition, for us, it's a bit easier to um, invite those students in to come and be with us. So we have uh, a great relationship with the local schools, 
a number of the teachers and retired teachers uh, play in our ensemble. Um, and so we get quite a few of the high school students um, to come play with us, as well as on occasion, even some of the middle school students uh, will come and play with us. Uh, another uh, great thing that we have is we have a number of, of parents in the group who, when their children are, are old enough to come start playing uh, with us, they do. And so you know, it becomes a, a, a family affair as well. So I think that that's, um, that's one, one way to do that, um, to have the students seeing um, these opportunities. Here at Ohio University, um, there's a, a concert band that's called the University Band, which is comprised primarily of non-music majors, but there's students on campus who um, want to continue playing their instruments and playing in band. Um, I think one of the really nice things about the group here is that um, it is also open to community members. So we also get, in addition to the students, about a dozen um, community members who come in on, on Tuesday nights and um, rehearse and play with the group. And again, I think that that's a, a, a wonderful way for the students to um, literally see these adults in their community continuing to make music um, and not just have it be this sort of abstract idea of, well, okay, I, I guess I can keep playing my music or, you know, after I, I graduate, um, um, you know, actually seeing it in action, I think is, is important. So I think for, for us, always thinking about how we can can build those kinds of connections and opportunities um, is is important. And you know as far as you know words of, of advice that I, I might offer to to a, a student, I try with my students to always along the way plant the idea of lifelong, music making you know not just waiting until graduation day and, and kind of yelling off oh you know, don't don't forget you can keep playing your instrument you know <laughs> no making this you know a part something that you talk about all the, you know mm -hmm. not all the time but you know every once in a while you know you're making sure that you're developing this idea that this is is something that you can um do as as a, a lifelong participant in the arts um and so i i think um that's how i would answer that part of the question is is not you know not just waiting until the very end to try to to tell a student that they can keep playing, but trying to encourage opportunities um, and just, you know, plant the idea along the way that, you know, don't, don't just give up your instrument when you graduate, keep, keep playing. Very well said. I mean, again, that, that's great that you do that with students, um, you know, and, and as far as, you know, in that kind of role, and then obviously you're doing it with adults too, um, just because, you know, it's just been my, quest I guess to just get people to continue making music and it's it's hard because you know I've I've gotten that well it's life and I'm busy and you know, don't play anymore and you know those kind of things and it's it's just sad because we build them to be such great musicians and I know I just want them out there <laughs> you know and I know you do too <laughs> so well thank you so much Meg um, I appreciate you taking the time to do this um, and I will say this I know I've sent this to you probably a couple times but um you know, I, I know when I had to leave, you know, the uh, Belfont Community Band, I was devastated because I didn't really want to leave the area. And um, I was worried about the group. And I know of, again, I'm seeing snapshots and I'm not saying that momentum has been going forward. And, you know, I'm just I'm just so excited that, you know, it's happening for you like it was for me, <laughs> just because that was my worry. I didn't want to see the group go downhill. <laughs> You know, so, so, so thank you for that. And, um, you know, and thank you for, you know, all this, all the things you do, you know, and, and still being a contributor to music just because, you know, I, I love bouncing ideas off of you talking to you and, and just seeing of how you are continuing to inspire people. And, you know, there, there needs to be more of you out there. 
<laughs> so we can continue making music. So thank you. So. Well, thanks so much for having me here to talk with you today, Josh. Thank you.